So we're gonna do one more today about the heart because I want you to understand the electromagnetic radiation of the heart. So this is gonna be oversimplified. If you're a cardiologist and you're here, I apologize. It's gonna be an oversimplification just so people can get the, con the concept of how we create an electromagnetic field. So your heart has a left atrium that pumps blood in. The blood flows through your heart comes out of your, uh, or I'm sorry, your right atrium, out of your left atrium, into your aorta, and down through your body. And the way this works is you have a pacemaker node up here that sends electrical impulses through your cardiac muscle. So in each of your heart cells, you have also voltage-gated ion channels. So outside of the muscle, you have an accumulation of ions, sodium ions, uh, calcium ions. Inside of the muscle cell, you have more potassium ions. That creates an electrical gradient. So it creates a, an electrical separation, basically. So it's more positive on the outside, more negative on the inside. And you have pumps, or like doors, like we talked about yesterday, that will open and allow things like calcium and sodium to come into the cell, changing the electrical gradient across the cell membrane. And then you have pumps like potassium pumps that push potassium back out. Every time your heart beats or this node at the top of your heart tells your body to open and close these channels, you are changing the electrical gradient in millivolts across your heart. So you go from a negative 60 to about a plus 10 in terms of electricity. Let's just call it zero. So you have positive outside, negative inside. We'll call it a net zero just for ease of information. So as that happens, you create an electric field or an electrical current that travels through your heart just like the blood does, causing the heart to pump. And most people think that the, work, the heart works like a piston, just doing this type of thing. But it really doesn't. The mechanism by which when I'm hiking on the mountain and I tell you guys it torques or twerks, it's actually more of a twisting mechanism, more like this, to literally throw the blood out. So it's not so much like a piston as it is like a twisting mechanism. So you create this electrical gradient over and over and over, 70, 80 times per minute. If you stop for more than a few seconds, you don't get the blood that goes up to perfuse your head. And what do you do? You pass out. Now, the first interesting thing is when you're doing this, you are creating an electromagnetic field. So your heart is based on electricity, which also creates an electromagnetic field that we can, um, that we can detect outside of the body. So that's what an EKG is. So when you have a 12 lead EKG, they put different metal on you to pick this up. That is because you are creating an electromagnetic field. So when I show the pictures that you guys love, you are literally creating a field of energy or information that you can detect remote, just like a torus. Yeah, so it's twerking, it's twisting, it's throwing the blood, and it is sending waves of electromagnetic radiation. So this is the most powerful electromagnetic radiation that's coming off of the body. I post every year at this time about the US jets and labor or laser or I have for the past couple of years. So the United States military, Pentagon, has a laser that from 200 meters away can detect this electromagnetic field. So when you walk into a room of people, if you're a sensitive person, and you have trained your autonomic nervous system to pick up on an energetic field, which would be subconscious. It's not like you're gonna have a thought like, I'm feeling that person's field. You might if you're good at it, but your autonomic nervous system can work like a US Jetson laser that's owned by the Pentagon from 200 meters away. That's a long ways away to pick up this electromagnetic field of the heart. Now the other thing, the heart and the brain are connected. So they're, they're connected by hormones, they're connected by neurotransmitters, they're connected by, connected by nervous uh, system impulses, they're connected because the brain also has its own electromagnetic field that can be detected outside of its head, out of your head, and 
You also, this is the important part about the people with aneurysm and rigid vessels. When you're torquing that blood, not pumping like a piston, but literally like throwing it, it's literally like this kind of action. When the blood comes out of your aorta, um, and the picture's kind of convoluted, this is your aorta. So if you have an aortic aneurysm, it literally means you have a huge outpouching here, and they can bit, get to be four or five or six centimeters, right? The blood comes out of the aorta and it travels down here and it splits and it goes down into your legs. But some of it hits what's called the iliac bifurcation and there is a pulse wave that comes back up. So when we talk all the time about waves, what can waves do? Waves can crash and become turbulent or they can be calm and relaxed. So when you are in a calm, relaxed state, meaning your heart rate lowers, your body goes into deep sleep, or you go into a meditative state, thank you, you can put him down. Just let him loose. Hi, Charlie. Come on. Thanks, Cece. When you go into that relaxed state, instead of the pulse pressure coming back up and banging against a descending wave and crashing, they will become calmer. So that's another form of communication. Your, it's called your pulse pressure, and it's literally like waves crashing on a beach or not, that transmits information to your brain and the rest of the body about what's going on with the heart. So you are an intricate, intricate quantum being that emits electromagnetic radiation. The most powerful way you do that is with your heart, but you're also doing it with your brain. When your heart and your brain are in sync, that's when the magic happens. How do you make your heart and brain in sync? You have to increase your mitochondria. You have to exercise your mitochondria. So what is driving all of this in the heart is mitochondrial function. What If you, ha if you are a person with a large aortic aneurysm, which we've been talking about over the past week, Charlie, come here, and you have an outpouching, it's kind of like you have a balloon, a balloon here, and the blood just kind of stretches and it, it, does, it affects negatively your um, pulse pressure. Or if it's calcified, or any of this vessel is calcified, or if this is calcified, it's gonna change your pulse pressure, okay? So it's gonna change that relationship, which is gonna make it more challenging for you to emit your energy, right? Does that make sense? This is the biggest part of it. Now, there's other part of it in your peripheral vessels. There's part of it that has to do with the communication in your brain. But I just want everybody to understand that when your heart is twerking, twerking, T-O-R-Q-U-I-N-G, not twerking, but it's kind of like twerking, you're literally tossing the blood. So if you or your husband has damage, a large aortic aneurysm, it's kind of like you take a water balloon that's fairly tight and if you're constantly pummeling it off and on with a hose, that water, that area of that water balloon becomes really, really thin and it can't do its job anymore, okay? That area of the water balloon gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you lose your ability to push your blood back down in the efficient way that you were born to do it. If you get calcification, so what did we talk about in the, um, what did we talk about in the, webinar on Saturday, we talk about how vitamin D with K2, how vitamin K2 controls your um, body's desire to put calcium into these vessels. So K2 that you get from fermented food or food that's kind of sat out and gotten bacteria in it, which is not a bad thing if you were living an ancient way, tells you to keep the calcium out of your blood vessels like your aorta or like your more peripheral blood vessels and to put it into your bone. So you can think of vitamin K2 as your traffic director for you to tell your calcium to go and build strong bone. Build. He knocked the trash over on himself. He's a little mischievous little thing, huh? No, Charlie, that's, no. No. K2 is your vitamin or your nutrient, which is a fat soluble vitamin. So if you're not eating fermented foods or you can't eat fermented foods or you're not eating aged meat, you have to supplement with K2. But K2 is a fat soluble vitamin, so it has to be taken with fat, okay? 
So A, D, E, and K are your fat-soluble vitamins if you're taking it as a vitamin, meaning take them with fat. Um, okay, so I hope that makes sense. Your heart and your brain, when they are coherent, can be felt outside of your body. We've proven that it can be felt, too, it can be detected by a laser from 200 meters away. You've all heard me talk in the morning about the frequency of your electromagnetic radiation. And if you get into a delta wave sleep, when it's the slowest and the waves are the longest, if you calculate it, that then says that the human heartbeat or in resonance with the human brain can be felt around the world, literally around the world. That's how powerful we are when we're healthy. How do you get healthy? You have to make more mitochondria. How do you make more mitochondria? Ketosis, sunshine, fasting, with the right nutrition, not entering a starvation state, which is what everybody's arguing about. This is not starvation. This is getting yourself down where you have a good amount of lean muscle mass, not too much fat. So for a woman, that's typically 18 to 21, 22%. For a man, that's a little bit lower, right? 10, 15%. You know the ideal for you. I can't tell you the ideal for you. But when you get down and you are made of muscle and less fat and you're making more mitochondria, that's when your signal becomes more powerful. Then it's just up to you. Then he wants my attention. Then it's just up to you to create your reality. It's up to you what choices you make. It's up to you to uh, engage with people or entangle with people. The rest is up to you. Okay, make sense?